Hey, this is Lou Mangiello from WDW Radio, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. Let's do this. The tangents this week continue all the way to episode 402 of the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast, and I'm the newest dwarf on the block. You can call me Squeaky. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like a do from the virtual table and see who joins us this week. This is Brittany Belvedere. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in the Diamond Mine. How are you, everybody? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, I came down with the world's worst cold late last week if you listen to last week's gold standard i sounded an awful lot like this and it's uh, and i thought that that's as bad as worse as it was as bad as it was gonna get oh no oh no by friday morning it was it was everything it was coughing it was a runny nose it was body aches. It was everything. And I was just miserable. But I've gotten oh, oh, oh. over the worst of it. Problem is, with all the coughing, my poor throat has been ravaged. And like, it's protesting. <laughs> like seven dwarves have gone after it with their pickaxes. So at the moment, I sound like I have not gone through puberty yet. <clears throat> which I have, I promise. Um be really weird if i hadn't uh so yeah but otherwise i'm fine i saw a little bit of a cough but even that for the most part it's gone it's just i sound ridiculous at the moment so and how long this will last i have no idea so i figure let's just go with it whatever this is about the only talking i have to do in a day anyway so what am i resting the rest of the day for for this so there you go. You're welcome. Happy New Year to me. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, anyway. Let's do the news, which there actually isn't a whole lot of news. Uh, except the bit of news that I realized that I forgot to add after the fact. And then Shalane made sure to bring it up in her feedback <laughs> that we will mention here shortly. Mm -hmm. uh so but yeah i totally totally forgot that this was a thing that the disney slash marvel announced on stanley's birthday which was in between christmas and new year's it would have been stan's 100th birthday but wow. there is a documentary about stan that will be, be coming out presumably at some point this year when we do not know but uh yeah so we're getting a I guess comprehensive Stanley document. I'm sure we'll see a lot of familiar faces in this documentary and hear a lot of stories that we've probably heard before. But hey, you know, it's Stan the Man. Why not? I mean, 100 years. I mean, he would have turned 100 literally, you know. A few days before we switch over into the year where the Walt Disney Company is turning 100. So, wow. Yeah. That says something mm -hmm. about the folks of that generation. Stan, Walt, mm -hmm. it's all good. So, yep. but yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see more details as they are announced. So, um, but other than that, uh housekeeping like i said newest episode of gold standard out in the feeds you can listen to our review of forrest gump Yay. where i sound like this the entire time <laughs> and, rachel you know what i'm going to uh take over feedback for you to save your voice a little bit here okay that sounds okay with well you. they Thankfully, Shalane's feedback is fairly short. Unlike the feedback from Aaron, I got to read on Gold Standard. Oh boy! I'm just teasing, Aaron. We appreciate your <laughs> we appreciate your long feedback wherever you may send it, whichever show. 
we appreciate the the support. The fact that you take the time to write such long feedback is a, it's a, it's a good thing. So, mm-hmm. but anyway, right. well, yeah, okay. we got feedback from oh. Shalane. Yes, we did. So from Shalane, she says, "Happy New Year's, ladies! I thought you girls were going to kick off the New Year by going back to your review of the 20." 22 episode no we don't need to relive <laughs> that no sometimes those years in review the past couple of years they were like yeah yeah no, no. <laughs> let let salt and burn and start fresh and sage shall we <laughs> Uh, then she goes on to say, you girls missed the trailer of the Stanley documentary that will be on Disney Plus this new year. Uh, that was announced on Stanley's 100th birthday. Rachel, you just brought that up. Mm-hmm. Her next point. Uh, also, I think you girls should talk about your favorite reality shows if you girls love reality shows. Well, let's see. Reality shows for me, uh, every now and again, Chopped, Mass Singer, I kind of... I catch here and there I've kind of fallen off and I haven't watched Survivor in years. <laughs> I don't watch reality shows. I barely That's watch regular kind of TV as it is. Reality so. shows. <laughs> yeah. I, I occasionally watch competition shows. That's the mm-hmm. closest reality I get to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, her next bit is uh with our actors in the hat that we pulled um the only movies and tv shows that uh shalane's seen john lithgow in are shrek harry and the hendersons the crown footloose orange country interstellar pitch perfect three rise of the planets of the apes and once upon a time in wonderland uh for woody harrelson uh hunger games now you've seen me oh i forgot about that one the Han Solo movie and Venom 2. And for Alex Kingston, she's only seen the Gilmer's Girl sequel. So, how have we not turned you into a Hoovian yet, Shalane? I know exactly, right? Shalane. You need to watch the episodes of Alex Kingston. You, I think, you will fall in love with River Song. Uh, something tells me uh, your sister will probably try to fix that sometime in the near future. <laughs> If not, we will try to. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> so thank you so much, Shalane, for your feedback. It's always yep. appreciated. Mm-hmm. So. Well, this week we are going to do something we've done a few times already because it just so happens that over the holiday break although technically it was before christmas because it premiered on december 21st but still uh recently was the 85th anniversary of the release of walt disney's snow white and the seven doors which is always you know it's obviously a very important film which we'll get into um very important not just you know very important for the film industry and hollywood but obviously also very important for the walt disney company because without snow white really uh i don't think we'd be celebrating 100 years of the walt disney company now (laughs) i think you are right rachel i think you are absolutely right It's it's only I think it's only appropriate with the 85th anniversary and now Disney's kicking off the you know the 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 whatever 100 years it's not platinum uh you know super duper 100th anniversary you know celebration this year that we should talk about the the OG Disney princess the one that helped start it all with Snow White um of course like most fairy tales and princesses that we've talked about this point because we've done beauty and the beast and mulan right is it only the two so far i think so yeah 
um yeah. that uh the 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 history of the and the story and origins of these princesses goes way before Walt and his animators got their hands on said stories um so um and of course snow white uh comes from well most people most i'm doing big air quotes here mm. most people agree that the snow white that most people again air quotes recognize elements wise again belongs to the grim brothers mm -hmm. uh, we get a lot of our the disney fairy tales can be traced back to the grim brothers stories there are some stories that have like one or two elements that we might recognize as snow whitish three grim brothers even going back to like the 1600s um but most people agree that it's the grim brothers because that's got the most components that most people will recognize um of course even then things have changed over time even the grim brothers version changed over time their version of snow white was first published in their first book of fairy tales in 1812 but that story kept getting revised and had its final revision published in 1854 so wow. even the Grimm Brothers Snow White was revised over and over again over the course of more than 40 years. <laughs> so, but again, a lot of the things that we recognize are part of it. Um, obviously, the Disney version, extremely sanitized. Although, as far as some of the other fairy tales that we've talked about and the ones that we will in the future... Um, we're looking to you, Cinderella, and uh, although, and the Little Mermaid, although the Little Mermaid's not the Grimm Brothers, that's Hans Christian Andersen, but still, um, <clears throat> mm -hmm. some of the other Disney princesses who we've not gotten into yet, their origin stories are very, very dark <laughs> mm -hmm. and don't necessarily have the happiest endings. Again, I'm looking at you, Little Mermaid. Uh, yep. um, <laughs> this one has a happy ending actually even the grim brothers although it takes a bit more to get there um again depending on which version you read but the i the idea is that once upon a time you know there was a woman she was a queen uh she was sitting uh in her castle one day in winter time sewing while looking out the window and she accidentally pricks herself with her needle and some blots, uh, some droplets of blood fall onto the snow that's on the windowsill. And she looks at it and she's like, oh, I wish I had a daughter whose, you know, lips were as red as the as the blood from my fingers and skin as white as the snow and black as the 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 stone that create, you know, that creates this window. Um, and then she ends up having a baby girl and dies um although in some versions it is snow white's actual birth mother that becomes the evil queen which is like you got what you wished for and now you're jealous of her beauty what the hell is wrong with you uh <laughs> but in most cases the the mother dies the king snow's father remarries the stepmother uh, is is extremely vain and therefore jealous of Snow White, forces her to dress in rags, um, <clears throat> has a magic mirror that she's constantly asking, who's the fairest of them all? And that's one of those Mandela effect things. She never says mirror, mirror on the wall. It's magic mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? Um, uh, and then, you know, the for while Snow is still little, hasn't gone through puberty yet essentially uh <laughs> the 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 mirror is all like you are my 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 queen until snow white reaches a certain age again it varies on which version you're consuming 
Um, and so in the one case, she's like seven <laughs> when all the crap goes down with the huntsman. Um, in the Disney version, she's like 11, 12, something like that. She's young. Um, and, um, you know, the, the mirror is all like, you know, your, your, your stepdaughter, Snow White, she's the fairest in the land. And of course the queen's like, oh, I can't have that. Um, so she take makes the huntsman go out into the woods to kill Snow White. The huntsman can't do it. Uh, tell Snow to run away. So she does. He ends up killing an animal. Again, it varies. Uh, returns it to the, the queen. Something the Disney movie left out is the fact that the queen eats the heart. Uh, which is gross. Um, leave the leave, leave the heart eating to Daenerys. Um, <laughs> um, and then Snow eventually stumbles across the house of the dwarves, lets herself in, uh, makes herself at home. They come home, find her, realize she's the princess, realize that you know she needs protecting. She becomes friends with them. Eventually, the queen finds out that Snow is still alive. And in the grim tale, she makes three attempts on Snow's life. First, she goes in disguise, uh, selling uh, laces for her bodice um, and uh, offers, uh, uh, you know, real nice pretty ribbon or whatever for snow's bodice of her dress and uh offers to tie it for her ties it so tight that snow passes out uh from lack of oxygen she pulls an elizabeth swan essentially uh from parts of the caribbean the, fir the first movie um and uh and uh but then the the doors come back and uh do like jack sparrow and loosen up the bodice and she can breathe again and she's fine uh so then the the queen comes back a second time in a different disguise uh with hair combs like the not the type to like brush your hair but the type to like if you put your hair up to hold it in place um and she's poisoned the comb but she convinces snow white to take one and put it in her hair. Snow succumbs to the poison. And uh, the queen takes off. Thinking she that she's won. The <clears throat> dwarves come back. Pull the comb from Snow's hair. She wakes up. Apparently this girl is really resilient to poison. Either that or the evil queen is really sucky at making poison. That only lasts for so long. Um, so then the queen's like, dag nabbit. Third time's a charm. Uh, so this time she goes uh, as the old hag with the apples. Uh, obviously the, the apples are poisoned. Um, and at this point, the Snow White's become very paranoid um, on her own and also because of the dwarf's <laughs> insistence um, that she really, really, really needs to be careful about who she talks to and not letting any strangers in the house. Um, so this time the queen shows up and is all like, you know, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I don't even want to come in the house. I just want to give me an apple. And of course, Snow's like, I don't know about that. Um, and the, the queen, you know, the, the queen in disguise is like, oh, dearie, don't worry about it. Look, I'll even take a bite of the apple, too, because she only poisoned one half of the apple. She was smart. She was thinking ahead. So she takes a bite out of the side that's not poisoned. And then Snow is all like, oh, that's fine. So then she takes a bite of the side of the apple that is poison. And of course, immediately plops on the ground. <laughs> the queen takes off. Uh, and the uh, dwarves come home, find Snow's seemingly lifeless body. Are like, oh, crap. And nothing they do seems to fix it. So they put her in the glass coffin because she's so beautiful that they don't want to put her in the ground um and in one version of the tale like she's in this coffin for like seven years and she keeps growing which you think wow. would have been a clue that maybe she's not dead so then so they have to keep making her a new coffin 
to like some sort of suspended animation <laughs> yeah apparently that's not a thing that the dwarves are aware of um even though they, you know they got magic witches and and stuff um, or for D players in extended rest and repose <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly so yeah she keeps growing so they have to keep making her bigger glass coffins um and eventually the prince shows up and he's all like, oh, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Please let me buy her. And the dwarves are like, no, we're not going to let you buy her, buy you weirdo. Her. Um, and the and the prince is like, oh, okay. So he comes back like the next day and he's all like, can I just have her? And the dwarves are like, oh, that's okay. She's <laughs> Because apparently, you know, buying her was too weird, but he can just have her. Consent, and not a thing back then, I'm guessing. <laughs> I guess so. Um, again, it's these not like we have that grand opening scene from Once Upon a Time with Prince Charming barreling on that white horse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to exactly. come to the rescue. Yeah. So apparently this time the dwarves are like, oh, no, that's okay. You can just have her if you want. Uh, so the prince is like, sweet. So he takes her back to his castle um, and continues to watch over her seemingly dead body. Um, and apparently, uh, like, it totally consumes him and all of his, like, servants in his castle trying to, you know, keep this this dead woman's body, like, pristine you know make sure the glass is shiny you know you don't have any fingerprints on it and make sure the gold of the coffin is all shiny and that sort of thing um until one it again varies from version in one version one of his servants gets so like pissed off that they're being forced to work to like keep this coffin pristine for this dead body that he takes so its body out of the coffin and starts like messing with it like she's a giant like rag doll or something and that oh, forces the yeah. bit of apple out of her throat and, ah. she's, and she's suddenly awake again in another version when the prince has taken possession of her while they're traveling to his castle one of the servants helping carry the casket stumbles and that causes the piece of poison apple to dislodge from her throat and suddenly she's alive either way she she didn't she even wasn't she was choking but also poisoned but again the queen's poison can't be that good a poison if all you need to do is remove it so it's no longer touching your victim's body and they're perfectly fine i don't know um they i guess they did not know how well poison worked in the 1800s i have no idea but either way snow white's awake the prince is absolutely thrilled so like yay let's get married um and so they immediately plan their wedding and uh for some reason this entire time however long it's been again whichever version you're reading it could have been weeks it could have been years uh apparently this entire time the queen has been convinced that she was successful this time and has not been consulting the magic mirror but it just so happens the day of snow white's wedding she decides she needs to ask the mirror who's the fairest of them all and the mirror's like the prince's bride <laughs> um the 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 woman that the prince is about to marry is the fairest of the land but the mirror does not know that that's snow white and neither is queen uh they just know that there's now this new this new chicken town that apparently is super hot hotter than the queen and the queen was like well i can't have this i need to find out who this hot new hot chick is so and take she the competition. <laughs> yeah so she sneaks over to the prince's castle as the wedding's going on you know the wedding ceremony is about to start and sees that it's snow white and she's like well screw this I'm just gonna strangle her or whatever. So she goes. She goes after Snow White, and of course the prince is all like, uh, "Oh no, you like, don't!" Yeah, he's like, uh, "No, you don't." So the the evil queen is immediately captured, um, and as punishment for trying to kill Snow White so many times, uh, they have uh, shoes made for her out of 
hot red hot iron Mm -hmm. that are forced that she's forced to wear and dance until she drops over dead Uh uh-huh and then when she's dropped over dead then he and snow white get married and live happily ever after yep that is essentially the grim brothers version of snow white the seven dwarfs Way different. <laughs> so you can see why Disney sanitized. Oh yeah, because you try to see Disney trying to explain this to the board and like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, obviously, there's a, a significant amount of time between 1812, the first publishing, and 1937 when the Disney movie is released. Uh, there have been lots of other versions of Snow White in various forms uh, that have been released. Um, there was, there's been, there were stage versions. Uh, there was actually the stage version in 1912, so 100 years after the first original printing, was the actually when the dwarves got individual names i don't know what they were called before i guess just the dwarves they were like the beetles and they didn't have their own names they were just collectively known as the dwarves i'm not entirely sure so check these out for names that the dwarves had in 1912 blick flick glick snick flick wick and quee Quee was the youngest oh. at a spry 99 years old and apparently was a kleptomaniac. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. So. So we yeah. have a dwarf niffler. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a stage version that gave Walt the idea or it you know introduced Walt to the idea of a you know a performing you know someone performing a version of the Snow White tale instead of just reading it in a book. Um he saw it um in about 1916 when he was a kid living in Kansas City. Uh he saw a stage version of it. Or no, it was a film. It was a live action film. Um sorry still um but uh but he he absolutely loved it you know he's like uh he said uh he said to me i thought it was a a perfect story i had the sympathetic dwarves and things i had the prince and the girl the romance i had the heavy i just thought it was a perfect story of course it would still be a little while before he got to make his own version uh, first, he needed to film the Walt Disney Company with his brother Roy in 1923, um, and then uh, obviously very successful with eventually Mickey Mouse debuting in 1928. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, you know, very successful with things like the Mickey Mouse cartoons, the Silly Symphonies. You know, all these sorts of things, but Walt definitely being Walt. I don't know how many times we've talked about Walt on here and Will again. That Walt was always pushing the boundaries uh, and expectations of entertainment. Um, and this was uh, no, no exception. Um, and he realized that feature length film especially cartoons if done right could potentially be extremely lucrative um so that's what he wanted to do gosh darn it um now in 1933 mary pickford who people may know from peter pan uh among other things uh, approached Walt about doing a hybrid live action animation film version of Alice in Wonderland because uh, he had already done the Alice comedies 
you know, the shorts. So he had already proven he could do the combination of live action and animation. <clears throat> but unfortunately, uh, Pear, was it Paramount? Yeah, Paramount already had a Alice in Wonderland film in production. So they scrapped that. Then they thought about maybe doing um uh yeah uh do 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 what was it um a uh Rip Van Winkle starring Will Rogers but Paramount owned the rights to that so they couldn't do that and then they were considering doing uh Babes in Toyland uh which didn't they end up doing Babes in Toyland later I think yeah, they did uh, with Annette Funicello and um, yeah, it wasn't Frankie Avalon. It was this another teen idol, one. but yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is the early thirties. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, they thought about maybe doing Babes in Toyland, but um, that didn't work either because uh, Hal Roach, uh, who is a producer, got rights to make his own version, film version. Uh, an operetta version of Babes in Toyland star- starring Laurel Hardy. <laughs> oh boy, interesting. Yeah. So finally, in 1934, Walt was like, "Snow White and the Seven Doors." That's what we're gonna do. Because he'd seen that that silent version in 1916. He's like, "That's what we're gonna do." So Walt, being Walt, of course, told the New York Times. And the summer of 1934 that they were going to do a feature length cartoon that at the time they were just calling feature symphony. Um, and he thought that it was going to cost $250,000 to make, which in 1930s money is a lot. And that's about 10 times more than what the silly symphony shorts, a single one of those would cost. <laughs> so a lot of money it ended mm-hmm. up being a whole lot more than that <laughs> but we'll get to that but Walt being Walt he's like no we can do it absolutely we'll get to work on it uh so they did all you know they did all sorts of things you know he would uh he had all of his um animators uh take classes because most of them actually weren't train cartoonists they'd all come from things like newspaper um so uh the idea of doing cell animation you know hand drawn where you know each every piece of plastic you know that cell every single one you know is just a you know a slight little bit of movement most of his animators were not actually trained in how to do that now that being said, the fact that it was cell animation is what makes Snow White and the Seven Doors has the, have the distinction it does. It technically is not the first feature-length animated film. It is the first feature-length cell animated film. That is the distinction. Um, I don't know what the process was for the for the film that came before it. Um, I guess it, it's one of those things. It's just this is this was such a big splash that whatever came before it is just kind of rode off into obscurity. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, nobody nobody cares about what came before Snow White did the Seven Dwarves. Mm-hmm. Somewhere there's a poor little feature length cartoon going. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Uh, probably not. It was probably thrown in the trash somewhere. <laughs> yeah, could you? Or, or, or kind of the E or. Yeah. Thanks for noticing me. I yeah. guess. Yep. Uh, so yeah. So Walt had his team working really, really hard because this was this was something that had not been done before, and of course, you know, when war got out, that this is what. Walt and the studio were doing everybody thought it was us even his own wife tried to talk him out of it at one point and you know Lillian was like Walt's 
biggest supporter. So when Lillian is like, yeah, you know, honey, you may want to rethink this. <laughs> you know, Walt's really, really, you know, like <laughs> putting it out there uh, and and testing the limits and going outside the box. Uh, but Walt was, Walt was determined. And we all know when Walt Disney puts his mind to something, it's very, very hard to stop him. Uh, so... Uh, you know, so he made his, his cart, you know, his, his animators, uh, take lessons. Uh, you know, he, they would have nights where, uh, you know, they would have the, the storyboard up on the wall. I, you know, a lot of people have probably seen at least the, the little clip of Walt acting out the, uh, a scene with the, the witch, uh, you know, the evil queen when she's disguised as the old hag. But Walt went through the process of acting out like the entire movie and acting out all the parts for his team so that they would know exactly what he wanted. You know, they use a lot of live action references, you know, body doubles, um, that sort of thing. In some cases, like the the um, the the silly song where in the dwarves are just playing their instruments and then snow starts dancing with them and stuff. A lot of that was them just taking the live action footage that they had to reference and essentially tracing over it with the characters. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. The, and unfortunately, like I said, $250,000 wasn't going to cut it. That, that, that budget blew ballooned super high to the point where Walt had mortgaged his house and then that's he had mortgaged like everything he owned um, and that still wasn't enough uh, so he ended up having to go to the bank to try to get a loan for $250,000 um, and they had enough of the movie, like in the can, as it were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so from what I remember the, of reading, yeah, yeah, he took it to the bank to show the loan officer, the guy at the bank, what he was working on. And when he showed it to the guy at the bank, the guy, the guy at the bank was like, "Dude, you, this is gonna make bank. Here's your loan, no problem." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that 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 meme. Yeah, <laughs> shut up, take the money. Yeah, really, Go. it's like shut up and take this money. Finish this, finish this movie, Dagnabbit. It's going to be yes. a sensation. Where's uh, the rest? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. So yeah, they they did finish the movie, obviously, to the tune of. Almost one point five million dollars. Wow, that's a little, and this is a that's not that's that's in that day's money. That's not like in today's money. That is in nineteen thirties money. Well, almost one point five million dollars, which is a lot, especially for a cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, considering nineteen thirties, I don't even want to try to do the conversion to figure out what the heck will be in today's money. Yowza. Yeah. Yowza. Yeah. yeah. You know, and like the country had been through a recession earlier yeah. that decade, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not even a recession, a depression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's a, that's, that's a lot. That was a <laughs> lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but, uh, you know, for, 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 for better, for worse. They finished it. It premiered December 21st, 1937 at the Carthay Circle Theater in Hollywood and was an absolute smash. Immediately. Absolute smash. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it ended up having uh, a, a, another red carpet premiere in New York. And then one in like Miami or something. Um, then it got full general release uh, February 4th, 
1938, so uh, slightly under a month from now, will be the 85th anniversary of its general release to the public. Um, and earned 4.2 million just in the U.S. and Canada during its initial theater release. Um, and then once it was released internationally, it made another almost 8 million internationally. So I think, I think they did good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And it's been re-released in theaters num uh, quite a handful of times. Um, of course, it's been released on VHS, Laserdisc, DVD, Blu-ray, you know, lots of home, lots of home releases. Um, so I think, I think I read adjusted for inflation and everything in its lifetime in the, in the 85 years since its initial release, it's made like 480 something million dollars or something like that. So not bad for a movie that went over budget like six times mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. um, and of course famously won a honor you know especially oscar um at the 11th academy awards for uh being as a significant screen innovation, which has charmed millions and pioneered a great new entertainment field. Um, and then Walt, of course, famously getting the large Oscar with the seven little ones uh, presented mm -hmm. to him by Shirley Temple. Um, which, again, I don't know where those I don't know where those are on display now. The, the particular set they were on display for the longest time at disney's hollywood studios in florida okay. and then they were temporarily removed i think i told this story on gold standard i think and i may have to i'm sure i'm talking about it on here on here too um mm -hmm. it sounds familiar yeah i'm sure i talked about when we talked about walt um mm -hmm. They were, yeah, they were on display um, at Disney's Hollywood Studios. It was really cool because they put it in the room it was in. With The case was in the center of the room, and it was a round case. So they were displayed in a way that you could walk around and see all eight Oscars. Um, mm -hmm. The big one and then the seven little ones. Um, and then they took them out temporarily to give them to loan them to the movie production side of it so that they could be on display in Walt's office and saving Mr. Banks mm -hmm. I believe is where they could be seen that um, sounds right and then presumably they went back but then I have not been to the studio since 2017. <laughs> so I don't think they're still there. I'm sure they're on display somewhere. I just don't know where. Because I don't think they were on dis I don't think they're on display at the museum in San Francisco. I don't think. Maybe they are. I don't know. Somebody out there that's up on these things. Somebody tell me where's the where's the big Oscar and the seven little ones? Because I know I don't know where they're located now. I know where they were. Oh, you know, seventy years ago. <clears throat> but I've seen them in person. Is is the point I'm trying to make? Um, they they are really cool. It is really cool to see the seven little ones. <laughs> Just think that the cat view is all like, what if we made a big one and then seven little ones? That would be really catchy and 
chintzy, you know, chintzy and people go, oh, isn't that sweet? And how unique and how original. No one else will ever have anything like that. Yeah, no, Snow White should have won mm -hmm. the Academy Award for Best Picture that year. It wasn't even nominated. Um, because that was the year that Gone with the Wind won. I think it should have gone to Snow White. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm pretty sure I made that argument on Gold Standard when we talked Gone with the Wind. Um, so, <clears throat> but, uh, so yeah, so Snow White, uh, obviously, because it was so successful, allowed the studio to continue to try new things, obviously make way more fairy tales. And now we have a whole gamut of Disney princesses. Um, it, you know, it allowed Walt to, to finance things that maybe at the time weren't financially successful, things like Fantasia. But over time mm -hmm. have have come to you know get the recognition that they deserve um i not sure exactly how 100 percent true this is i kind of did a google search about the statues mm -hmm. according to a reddit thread in movie details they believe that the originals are still in san francisco and that there was a replica of the awards in orlando so i'm not 100 percent take that and yeah what it's worth a grain of salt because yeah. i'm coming up with that's the only thing i've been able to find there's no i mean if it, the, the museum source. in san, yeah the museum in san francisco would make sense as well mm -hmm. um because it because it's still public so people can see them fairly easily as long as you can get to the museum in san francisco as opposed to having them like on display display but not necessarily in a public place mm -hmm. like at the actual working studio in california right where unless you're there on a special tour or you work there you would never see them <clears throat> so they have to i'm sure they are someplace where the general public could see them right uh, so yeah and i'm, I'm sure that uh, yeah <clears throat> i mean walt has so many Academy Awards for a man that never won mm -hmm. a best picture ever. He's got he's one of the, the most decorated people in the history of the Academy Awards, but it's all for the short animated category. Cause that's what you had for the longest time. So Occasionally he'd win a short documentary for his like nature type things. Um but yeah, the shorts category is where where Walt uh, walked away with most of his his Oscar statues. <clears throat> so um but uh yeah, so Snow White. Um obviously very important. Uh very important for merchandising, of course. <laughs> As yogurt likes to say, merchandising. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, she's uh, all over the place. Uh, you know, the, the Snow White that we recognized from the cartoon with the the dark hair and the blue bodice and the red bow and the yellow skirt is a character you can see in all of the disney parks uh you know when they have the princesses and their princes together that's when you see prince charming because he never gets a name um the evil queen is a character uh, that she is a meetable character as well, along with the seven dwarves. Um, although you don't see the seven dwarves out in the parks during the daytime, during regular park hours, very often, they tend to only come out during the special events like the Christmas party and the Halloween party. 
because uh, they they once you get all seven of them together, they take up a lot of space. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. um, but well, I've met I've met all seven dwarves. Um, you know, um, there was the attraction, uh, which I will have the the link to the the YouTube video uh, about the history of the attraction. The attraction still exists in California and in some of the foreign parks. Um, what always cracks me up is when the attraction was originally open, which it was a, an opening day attraction in California. Uh, you know, it was, it was a Disneyland OG original. Um, Snow White is nowhere in the attraction. Because the guests were supposed to be taking the role of Snow White and experiencing her adventure like you were her. But apparently that, that was too cerebral for the guests and were very confused and would constantly ask where is Snow White in this Snow White ride. It was also extremely dark and scary. Not dark as in dark light level although it was kind of dark, right. light level wise but it was dark like scary dark <clears throat> they they took like that whole bit where snow white gets you know is told to run away by the huntsman and she starts freaking out in the middle of the woods they just took that mm -hmm. and ran with it uh <laughs> Ooh, yeah <laughs> yeah uh, that was the, scary in, enough watching it when I was younger and on the rewatch I was still like yeah it still holds up I still got a yeah. little yeah. this in the original attraction so eventually the Imagineers are like oh crap well we need to fix this so then they renamed it to Snow White Scary Adventures so that people would know that it can be scary and Snow White actually appears in it now um, and they also changed some other stuff too um and you can like i said the you can still write it in disneyland the well disney world magic kingdom version uh was closed when the fantasy land expansion happened <clears throat> and now we have the seven dwarves mine train ride which is really really cool um it's uh it's a, a roller coaster but it's not like a like a super like heavy duty coaster but you're riding in these mine cars but the mine cars instead of just sitting in like you know regular roller coaster like seat they're hinged so we like when you go around turns and stuff you swing side to side and if you get somebody that like sasquatch here behind me that's got some <laughs> literally throw his weight around. You can get some good swinging, swinging action going. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, mm -hmm. But some of the some of the original animatronics from the original Snow White's scary uh, scary adventures ride are in it. Um, so they weren't just like you know, rip the ride out, toss them in the trash. Uh, they did they did reuse a, a number of them and the 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 attraction is 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 pretty cool um so um and then uh you know she uh snow white has a star on the hollywood walk of fame she was the first female fictional character to get one Mickey Mouse, I think, was the first fictional character. Uh, but uh, Snow White was the first fictional female character to have hers somewhere. Miss Piggy is throwing a fit, but sorry, mm -hmm. she came first. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, and obviously, she shows up in a lot of places. Obviously, we have um our once upon a time version of mm -hmm. snow slash mary margaret um and prince charming who finally gets a name uh, uh -huh. <laughs> david um yeah. and of course the evil queen in regina uh -huh. uh, so uh so um there's that uh the descendants 
Um, if you've ever watched any of the the descendant stuff, the Evil Queen's kid. Um, um, uh, Evie, <laughs> her daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently Dopey's son uh, are characters <laughs> appear in the Descendants. So. Uh, so um the you've got snow white's rado at disneyland and tokyo disneyland and hong kong disneyland um and then there's also a uh wishing well located um next to both the castles in disneyland and hong kong and uh tokyo um so um you can go to you can go to the you know to the wishing well and make a wish it's a very popular location for wedding marriage proposals Mm -hmm. um and the like uh so um but uh, sometimes you can see snow white there uh sometimes she's elsewhere in the parks um so but uh you know obviously yeah snow white is significant as a cultural touchstone um but it's more of what walt did with the story and able to turn that turn it into a I mean, these days, you know, I, I rewatched it just for the, the hell of it. Um, mm-hmm. It's like 82, 83 minutes long, which these days is short compared to what we're used to, uh, for, you know, for what is considered feature. I think 70, it's either 75 or 80 minutes is considered feature length mm-hmm. um, nowadays um so it's technically it still counts um but it's a it's a it's a short little you know jaunt for a film it does it it's over before you know (laughs) because it's it's Mm -hmm. like 80 something minutes like oh my god this is so short uh but that was the thing at the time is people are like who's gonna sit through an 80 minute cartoon and Walt was all like, and I was like, well, yeah, if you if you're doing a like cartoon, like what people had seen up to that point, like, yeah, Steamboat Willie, obviously, very successful, helped launch Mickey Mouse. Um the Symphy Silly Sim, Silly Symphonies were very, very uh lucrative for Walt and the company as as well. But the reason that they were so short is because they weren't really telling a story. It was more just a series of gags strung together in an entertaining way that kind of has a loose plot. Like everybody knows Steamboat Willie. Can it? It's like if you if you walked up to somebody on the street, even somebody who's huge Disney film, and tell me what is the plot of Steamboat Willie. They were probably like, what? It has a plot? You know. Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily have a plot. Uh, it's just fun to look at because you got this funny looking mouse spinning a, you know, the wheel of a steamboat and hon- you know, hon- tooting his horn every now and then whistling and and all these things and it sounds cute and it looks cute and the music's a little catchy but it's not necessarily telling a story and that's what walt realized that yeah you could still have gags in there which there are a lot of gags in here that i forgot about um mm-hmm. you know it's partially uh, mm-hmm. the reason why i i rewatched it and some of the songs i forgot about too i totally mm-hmm. forgot about forgot about the uh the uh wash-up song <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> soup. Then it was a whole thing when Snow White tells them to go wash their hands for dinner. Yep. <laughs> so my yeah. favorite's always been the soup song. Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh but yeah there's all sorts of there's all sorts of, of visual gags most of them are are because of dopey um uh, but you know mm-hmm. it's it's uh yes. but it also tells a compelling story like i said you know the the bit where snow white is running through the woods scared out of her mind even i mean it's not scary to me now but watching it i'm like damn that's dark Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. like this is kind of kind of evil you know trees are like you know with these really ugly faces and like you know the really scary music and snow white screaming and you know it's just flashing lights and just all this like scary stuff i'm like they're gonna scare me you know of course the 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 evil queen when she does you know turns into the hag that's like it's also kind of scary too you know she's like her hands start getting all wrinkly and her hair's flying all over the place and turning white she's like "Eh," Mm -hmm. you know uh yeah, so the it's it's uh yeah you, know, you got the the love story between Snow White and the the prince who has no name, um, he's just charming. Um, I saw I forget. I think I may have it linked in the show notes. Um, it, I'll have several different videos linked in the show notes. Uh the origin of the actual snow white fairy tale and then stuff related to the disney stuff as well um but somebody some i forget which video it was but somebody commented that their head canon and a lot of people agreed with them was that we just don't see it but snow white and the prince actually already knew each other and had seen each other before in some circumstance that i guess you could build up in your head if you want um and they were already in love so when he shows up when she's singing at the wishing well she's not scared because oh there's a strange man who's now like here singing you know trying to duet with me but he's seeing me in my work clothes don't look at me i'm you know i'm not dressed up like you (laughs) like you'd expect me to and that's why she runs away (laughs) because when she yeah because because then it makes more sense when later when the dwarves are like you know tell us a story and she you know she goes to the the you know once there was a princess and they're like oh is the princess you and she's like yes and like and there was a prince and they fell in love um and what that's also why it's not so weird when he like kisses her and then when she's awake she's like oh darling here let's take off and live happily ever after like they just met you know like once before no they've already known each other but for whatever reason mm-hmm like he's never visited her or something um at, at the, this castle and seen her in the 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 rags that her stepmother makes her wear you yeah. um and obviously the 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 story that they give snow and regina in once upon a time a little different mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> so um just it's, lately it's a little um still good i mean it's a good it's a good take on the it's a good take on the origin story um though and and obviously yeah we talked about this we talked about when we talked about enchanted giselle has a lot of uh uh, snow white mannerisms Mm -hmm. like the things she does with her hands and the singing to the animals you know Mm -hmm. they have a happy cleanup work song uh you know she gets poisoned by an apple uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah so it's uh uh yeah she's the 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 genes the dna of snow white mm-hmm. are very solidly in yes. disney and are not gonna go anywhere mm-hmm. anytime soon even as other studios have tried to do their own version like the 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 snow white and the huntsman with with uh what's her face from twilight um, oh yeah 
uh, Kristen, whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's her face? Uh, it's, uh, is it Kristen Stewart? Yes, that sounds Maybe? right. Yeah, something like that. Um, uh, yes, oh, she got it. Woo! Hey, Woo! <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a a, a um, obviously a Snow White version of the Disney villains book series. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um yeah, then then the the uh the the twisted tales, the kind of the Disney princess version of what if, uh which I know Shalane has been trying to get me to read. I will Shalane. I'm just uh, occupied with other things. Um but they're they're on my to read list, but pro I promise. Um but in that version, it's what if the evil queen poisoned the prince instead? Um, and of course, there's the live action uh, film that's due out next year in 2024, um, where uh, Rachel Zegler, um, who played Maria in Steven Spielberg's West Side Story, um, it's gonna be playing Snow White and Gal Gadot. It's gonna be playing the Evil Queen. <laughs> Which that should be. I don't know how good. I don't know how good the movie is gonna be, but uh, I am. I I can totally envision Gal Gadot as Evil Queen. I think she's gonna be fabulous. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yes>. so... <laughs> I mean, I I loved her in Wonder Woman, and I'm just like, okay, let let's see how good she can do uh, evil here. <laughs> I'm yeah. thinking she can pull it off without a hitch. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but we'll, we'll see to see what they decide to, how they decide to approach this one. Cause let's see, Mark, Mark Webb is directing it, which he did, um, The Amazing Spider Man. The 2012 Spider Man and the screenplay was written by Greta Gerwig. So we shall, we shall see what they decide to do as far as telling that story, whether they'll, they'll uh, make it more of a carbon copy like they did with Beauty and the Beast or if they're gonna subvert it a little like they kind of did with Cinderella and Maleficent so mm -hmm. we shall find out next year I guess so but I like Snow White I mean she's not my favorite oh, yeah. Disney princess I mean she's kind of the most stereotypical disney princess mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah young beautiful which there's nothing wrong with that yeah but it, at least as far as the disney cartoon is concerned she doesn't have a lot of depth um you know she's obviously very sweet a little naive maybe a lot naive um but uh yeah she's She's the OG, and you can't take that away from her. She was here first. Yeah. You know, Disney was like, princesses, yeah, that's the thing we're going to do now. And she said, here I am. And everyone that's to come after is going to be like, got to stand behind me, sweet cheeks. Mm -hmm. No matter, sorry, Anna and Elsa, no matter how popular you are. You came along a lot later. <laughs> so. <laughs> People complain about about how much they were like sick of Frozen. Can you imagine being someone who was alive long enough to see like Snow White get re-released in theaters like five times? Mm. <laughs> 
Like what? We've seen it. Uh-huh. Move on. <laughs> Something else. Or, or the, please don't tell me they added anything extra or edited. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. Actually, although Snow White was the first, um, the it, it was this was in 1993 was the first film to be entirely scanned to digital so that they could clean it up cool so they could digitally remove all the scratches and dust and stuff that had ended up on the on the film (laughs) but unfortunately with film once you damage film you really can't do a whole lot about it but thankfully with Mm -hmm. digital stuff you can do those things now um so yeah they were able to go in and digitally remove all the dust and scratches and stuff and scan it to 4k um and then reprint it on new film at at 4k so the version now that any version that you own essentially after 1993 um should look a lot better than any version you may have had before that. Oh, and of course it's on Disney Plus as well. Right. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, and in the extras, there are a couple. There's like a thirty minute like making of documentary, along with a couple of shorter behind the scenes things that are like five or six minutes long, and of course a trailer. And then there's a couple of scenes that never made it into the final movie like the doors building snow white a bed apparently uh for they decided that they would just all sleep wherever and she would sleep in their beds she would just crawl across all of their beds she did like she was only taking up three when they first showed up so technically they still would have had four even after she took the three that between the seven of them, they could have arranged something so that, you know, like Grumpy wasn't sleeping in the soup pot. Right. You would think. But I guess that wouldn't be nearly as funny as, (laughs) you know, like the fly coming and landing on like it's Sleepy's nose and curling up in a ball and it starts snoring itself (laughs) again gags some good gags in there and some of them are kind of you blink and you miss them so um Mm -hmm. like the animals not (laughs) animals with snow white's like we're gonna clean this house and some of the animals are like um their, their idea of cleaning is not actual cleaning. <laughs> like I'm like writing notes. I look over at one point and there's like a deer like licking the dishes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ew. <laughs> Pre-wash. And then Snow White's like, no, you put those in the sink. I'm like, oh, okay, that's better. Yeah. Water and soap <laughs> is good. And then like the two like, I don't know, like squirrels they're yeah, like dusting and chipmunks. they yeah the squirrels and they're like we're just gonna put this under the rug and then snow white's like ah, ah. so they put in a mouse hole and then the mouse is all like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like wait a minute here yeah this is my home you're dirtying yeah like, wait i just cleaned minute. it yeah exactly like, what do you think you're doing smart alex <laughs> The precursors to Chip and Dale. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, that's a fun one. Mm-hmm. It's a fun one. Not necessarily my favorite, but you can't. Somebody's got to be first. <clears throat> and this was not a bad choice on Walt's Walt's behalf, so I'm not complaining. Oh. Anybody got anything? No. Nope. Not really. 
Okay, then. We'll keep this one short and sweet. That way I don't have to talk anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully by next week I'll do better. <clears throat> uh, all right. Well, if any of our listeners have thoughts on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, any iteration, the cartoon, Once Upon a Time, Descendants, take your pick. Um, any of the books. Uh, you can send us feedback like Shalane did. I'm sure Shalane will probably send us feedback because uh, mm -hmm. she loves uh, Disney. Uh, so. Yes, she does. And she's I'm always good surprised. about sending it in. Yep. Uh, so you can email us. Uh, email address is fivestrangirls at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website, website which is the fiveishfangirls.com, uh, where you can connect with us on all the other social medias and stuff. You can always send us a message that way if you want. Email is always best, though. But, you know, whatever. Um, also on our website uh, is uh, links to the Goodreads Book Club. So mm -hmm. every month we either read a Doctor Who book, related book, or listen to a Big Finish audio um, so you can join in a, this month's discussion or any of the past discussions because Holly mm -hmm. leaves them open. Yes, uh, I do. So you can go check that out. Uh, if you would like to financially support us, uh, we have our Kofi. Uh, we have our uh, Patreon. Um, or you can buy merch on our Redbubble. There's that. Um, and then, of course, also information on the Fangirls Give Back, our non for profit that's working on things. Very excited about mm -hmm. things we're working on in the back end. Yeah. So, if we can, if we can even get like a quarter of the things that I'm, you know, trying to arrange. 2023 is going to be awesome. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be awesome for us. Awesome for the Five-ish fam. Because mm -hmm. we love our Five-ish fam. Yes, we do. And uh, we really appreciate all the support. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So with that... I guess we will sign off for this week so I can shut up. This is Brittany Govida saying goodnight. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hi ho, hi ho, a night will I will go. <laughs>